This is a Sage Story. Hi, I'm Rachel Geeshan from originally from Wilmington, North Carolina. I'm 73 years old. Um, before I moved, when I was in high school, I played football, basketball, baseball, little league baseball. I was uh, the oldest of uh, three children. I have two sisters, one of which has passed away. Uh, in 1960, I joined the Air Force and um, stayed in there for 22 years, 10 months, and 23 days, as I like to say. All this time, I was, from about four to seven years old, I was fighting this wanting to wear women's clothes. It was terrible. It was horrible. I dated in high school. I dated for like a long time. And finally, all through the Air Force, I hit it and I hit it, to make the long story short. And I was married twice. I have five grown children, three grandchildren, and I couldn't take it anymore. Um, the ex and I separated in 2005. And then in uh, 2006, I moved to Raleigh. In 2007, I decided this is my life. I'm going to live it now. And so that's what I've done. I decided to transition. And when I did, it's the best thing I ever did in my life. Uh, I changed my name. I did all that. Um, I got my own apartment. I live by myself. I am very happy and content with myself. The one thing I would like to talk about is my relationship with my my children. I have, like I stated, I have five grown children. Um, of the five, three of them, um, I have uh, an okay relationship. We talk. They don't particularly like, um, if I can use the quotation marks around dad being transgender, um, we do talk. But it's not a real close relationship. It, it is um, it's kind of at arm's length. Um, I, I don't like the situation I'm in, but it, it, it but with them, but we do talk, and I, I have a somewhat good relationship with them. Uh, the youngest daughter, I don't understand her because she just recently, or well, in the last year, got an MSW, but she will not talk to me. She will not try to work out the situation at all. Um, I have another daughter who accepts me completely, but that's another whole story. I'll just leave it there. But on the other hand, with my one sister who survived me, uh, surviving sister, um, she thinks I'm mentally ill. I'm sick. I need to go to the loony bin, so to speak, as she put in an email to me. Um, and then um, it, it's just, it, with the family members, it's hard. It really is, because they don't understand. I was their dad for so many years, um, and now I'm Rachel. So, you know, it is hard. I understand that. Now, we talk about a lot of health care. I have not had a problem with my doctors about health care. They've been really nice. I haven't had a hard time. But on the other hand, in my experience with other my friends in these other support groups, nine times out of ten, the health care staff are not going to know about transgender. So I would encourage those of you that are viewing this to talk to your health care professionals in particular. I had a terrific uh, um, family doctor um, I'll tell you her name, just Dr. Jenkins. She was absolutely superb. She listened to me. She wanted to know. She asked questions. Um, and it was really easy talking to her about it because she really wanted to know. And that reminds me, there was another doctor. Um, the first time I saw her, she must have talked to me about 30 minutes about what it, what is transgender, what is it like. And so after talking with me, um, we went on about a way. And the next time I saw her, she says, it's a good thing I talked to you because I was on call the next week. And I had a couple, transgender couple, that I had to consult on. So I have really good experiences with that. 
I attend uh, LGBT, uh, go to LGBT Center all the time here in Raleigh. Uh, I attend support groups in uh, surrounding communities. Um, I try to talk to others about what it's like being uh, at my age and being transgender because these young people don't understand what a, what a, what a fight it is and was for us. I mean, they're fighting, but their fight is not as intense as ours was. Um, so being myself is the best thing. You learn to be yourself. You don't. Um, how do you say? You're just yourself. I can say it again. You're just yourself. And it's the best thing I ever did in my life. I, I can't help but encourage people to take care of themselves. Um, over in, in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, we have a support group over there, and I have made friends with a uh, girl who is... I mean, I can call her up, I can talk to her, um, we can email, and I, she understands what we're going through when it comes to family and friends. And it is, um, it is really so nice to know that you've got somebody you can lean on, to talk to, to uh, open up about, whether it be personal problems, you know, family problems, or just everyday problems in getting along in the community. Um, I thank support groups, but I particularly thank this, this young lady um, for her support in, in this. I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying life right now. And, and um, it's just been a phenomenal journey. The LGBT Center here in Raleigh, it's my little home away from home. Uh, meeting all of the other seniors in here. I never met so many seniors until our first little gathering at the, LG, at the center here. I didn't know there was that many senior gay men around or LGBT seniors. So it's been an eye-opening experience for me and I would just encourage everybody to be who you are. I really appreciate, I enjoy being able to tell my story just a little bit. And I hope it encourages others to understand that it's never too late. And I thank you. Share your story at sageusa.org backslash sage story.